Uh, Detroyer, I know that you wanted to ask T Jump about the moral law. Uh, did I? I think so. I don't... Um. I mean, should I? I mean, uh, T Jump, what was your, what was your view on the moral law? Um. The moral law describes involuntary impositions of will. Any involuntary imposition of will is immoral, something like that. Okay, so okay, what can so... count? Is anything that so anything that I don't want or that and then imposes on my will is therefore immoral or is that what you're saying? Um sort of. So like nature, gravity, time, other people, any of those things that restrict your freedom of will would be immoral. The only restriction is is that you can't apply it to other people. Like you can't have a will to harm someone else and not be able to do that. That's not a restriction of your will. That's just the definition of the sovereignty of their wills. <laughs> wait. Why is wait, why is why does that what, so wait, so if I have a desire to presumably I can will to harm somebody, I mean if, right, if I'm not can't... able to do that, isn't that an imposition on my will? No, because the definitions I'm using here of sovereignty imply that everyone should have sovereignty over themselves. So your will to harm them is actually an imposition on their will. So it's not an imposition on yours not to have that freedom. Right, but but that sovereignty fact of sovereignty or whatever, that that obtains is an imposition on my will, right? Because I may not want no, that not to by obtain, my definition right? though. By my definition, it's only an imposition if you don't, if you like, you have the right over yourself and your essential nature, the universe you're in or whatever, but you don't have a right over anyone else. So the fact that you don't have control over someone else is not by definition an imposition in the way I'm using the word. Well, then I guess certainly it could be part of my will, right? That I could will to harm someone sure. else, right? Sure. So you're saying that it's it's not an imposition on that will for that will to be... Uh, for you not to be able to realize you know, that, yeah. Restricted in that way. Yes. That's, that seems, I mean, that just seems trivially to be a case of, of my will being restricted. It seems an imposition that I wouldn't want. I, I don't, I, are you just saying that's definitionally not a restriction? Even yeah, though, by yeah, my yeah, definition, the way, I, yeah. the, way I, the way I use the word imposition is that it only applies in cases where your will and what you have a right over is being imposed upon. And you don't have a right over somebody else. So the fact that you can't impose on someone else is not an imposition on your will by my definition of imposition. Well, that seems funny now. You're saying the way you're using imposition is that uh, is kind of like a, a subset of the, of, of the, of the Cases of imposition, right? I mean, yeah. so I think, my right, will can I'm be imposed on in a variety of ways, but you're right. So you can use like murder. Like murder can let, let, let's just let him wow. talk to Detroyer for a moment here. So you can use some words to mean lots of things, like the word atom could by definitionally means the smallest constituent part. But in science, we discovered we called something an atom and then discovered it was made of smaller parts, but we didn't change the name. It's, we still just refer to atom as the one thing, the collection of protons and neutrons and electrons. You can use a word in a more specific sense to mean a specific thing without it referring to every possible meaning the word could possibly have. There's no problem with that. I, I just thought you'd you know, we're using the common sense uh, notion of imposition is, I mean, something that No, mine has a slight difference. Something... Right, right. I'm right. not using it in the general case that applies to any so possible imposition ever, no matter what. Something that it imposes on you and is in this category of sort of uh, impositions or acts, right? Something that imposes on you and that isn't imposing on someone else. So, so you don't get to impose right. on somebody else. Everything else is an imposition. You totally have a right to change that. You should morally have the right to stop any other imposition you want. But you don't have the right to will so an imposition on somebody else. That's the only condition. And by somebody else, are you just talking about people or any other anything, animal? Or anything with any consciousness. Entity at all? Anything, anything, anything with consciousness. With consciousness. I just find it, yeah, anything with consciousness I define as a moral agent. Or you can just say, are you just saying anything with a, with a will, right? That could be important. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. It's possible you could have consciousness without having a will. That would be an interesting question to answer. Right, and okay. Um, obviously, <laughs> I just want to ask a couple other questions because I know there's good stuff to talk about here all day. But 
Uh, earlier you said other stuff like like nature and, and time can be immoral? Yeah, so my yeah. definition is anything that imposes on your will, including time. If you don't want to get older and you're being forced to get older against your will, that would be an imposition on your will. So I would define that as immoral. Nature itself is immoral in my view. Oh, I mean, that's a very um, strange view of what can count as immoral, uh, but... Okay, let's get no, no, I grant that. Uh, I'm, if, I'm totally okay with that. What happens in the case where I have conflicting desires? Maybe maybe I want to stay my current age. Uh, I have some desire of that sort, but I also have some other desire to, you know, get older and so forth. What if I have conflicting desires? What, I what would leave it up to you. I would, I would let you choose whichever one, and you could undo the change. Like, go forward in time, go back in time, do whatever you want. It's your choice. Wait. But, no, but... You're saying that I could do that? or Yes. I, obviously, I can't do that. Right. So I'm saying it's immoral that you can't do that, and you should be able to do that. That would be the moral outcome. No, but... Okay. Wait, so... All right. But I, I, I'm just talking about... Suppose I, I don't have a particular answer. I'm just saying that I have these conflicting desires, and I don't have a... Uh, I don't it's, really know which, which I prefer more. I mean... It's still up to it, you. Is you there can... just no fact of the matter? Yeah, it's just, it's amoral. You can choose to go with one or the other or neither or whatever you want. It's up to you. So, I mean... But then, pres presumably, it's the case that either the time, the passage of time, is an imposition on my will or it is not an imposition on my will. And if my uh, desires are unclear about, uh, you know, whether I want time to pass or not, uh, how can there be an answer? So... Remember, it's an involuntary imposition of will. For something to be involuntary, it means it has to be against your will. And since these are both uh -huh. your will, it's not involuntary. So whatever you decide to do in that case, or if you're unable to decide because you have equally conflicting desires, that's not involuntary. It's just who you are. So it wouldn't qualify as immoral in my case. I'm not clear that that's really addressing what I said, right? I, I mean, we're supposing that I can't actually change the passage of time. And... Presumably on your on your system, either the passage of time is an imposition against my will, invo invo involuntary, or it is not right. an imposition. Right. And if my will is such that there's just no answer about which, which I would... Then it's prefer. amoral. It's amoral because it isn't against your will or for your will. It's both because you can't... Right, so it decide. isn't an imposition against my will in that case. Correct, because you haven't decided. You have to actually make the decision, I do not want this, and then it would have to be imposing on you regardless of what you want. So if you have so it's only an empires that don't it's only, that don't allow you to decide. It's only in a position on my will when I'm when I'm consciously aware of, of which desire I no, have. No, if you have two conflicting desires in two opposite directions, then you essentially have uh, apathy towards either way. <clears> so wait, there, you, that seems strange. Wait, did Trey ask you a question? On this? <clears throat> yeah, I'm a little sure. confused. I so you're if, <laughs> let me make sure I understand this right because it's confusing. So you're saying if I, for instance, want to get older and I want to age, then mm -hmm. me aging is moral, right? But if, for instance, Detroit right. didn't want to, it would be immoral, right? Right. So how is that moral realism? That's straight. That straightforwardly sounds like subjective. So the realism is just there's one principle applies universally to everyone, and that one principle is any involuntary imposition of will is immoral. But what fixes whether well, something's moral or moral is some subjective if, state. If so it is, it straightforwardly sounds like what's what depends what what's moral supervenes strictly on minds, right? And this principle. So I, it's very straight. When people talk about moral realism, they usually cash it out as in it doesn't matter what anyone thinks, right? But clearly, Correct. it does matter what we think. No. So again, so that one I'm principle. I'm not sure how you're a realist. So again, moral realism is there is one principle that is true, independent of any mind or what they think. So it doesn't matter what you think about the matter. Wait, that's not. The one principle is this is true. Any involuntary imposition of will is immoral. Wait, wait, wait. Now you that's subjectively you may be a choose. realist and a particularist. Okay, I, I don't no, care. We don't have to even so, cash out in principle. Well, you said there is moral realism is one principle. That's just false. It's just a version of moral realism. Again, you're being too pedantic here. Just. Use, use the principle of charity. It's pretty simple. So in this case, yeah. just moral realism means that there is some fact of morality that is true independent of any subjective thought of the matter. So there, the fact that is true independent of any thought of the matter is any involuntary imposition of will is immoral. You don't get an opinion on that. I don't get an opinion on that. Nobody gets an opinion on that. That is an objective moral realism fact. And then the Wait, fact why that, is that again? 
because it's true independent of what anybody thinks. It's true independent. Well, no, no, no. Like, why is it? Why is it the case? What What's the truth maker for that? Well, the argument I made with AY was that it could correspond to a law of nature or a particle or something in reality. Wait, what do you take the laws of nature? The laws of nature. Just, you, I said I don't have the background on this. It's so sorry if you already went over this, but I don't. What do you take the laws of nature to be? Are you a human or non-human? Uh, so, so that that was just a way to try to explain what objective meant. I don't actually believe that. I believe morality is like an abstract relation, like triangles. So, Wait, hold on a second. I thought you were saying a second ago you didn't believe you were you were an anomalous or a fictionalist about abstracta. I never said hey. that. Uh, somebody else called me anomalist. So, you, do you think abstracta exists? No, I think it does not exist. I think it's just a relation. Abstract relations do don't you, exist, but they can still have objective do relations true exist? qualities. About them. Wait, 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 hold on a second. You're, you're losing me very rapidly. Here. So triangles don't <laughs> exist. But if you draw yeah, a triangle, it'll add up to 180 degrees. Wait, what do you want to I make idea. reference to non-existent Okay, objects. wait, 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 wait. No, just hold let, on let, him, let him talk to Doorman. <laughs> T-jump and Doorman. So again, triangles don't exist. They're abstract objects. They don't exist. But we can draw a triangle, and if we draw a triangle, the angles will add up to 180 degrees. There is an objective relation between this abstract object. You know that... When we talk about Platonism, people can be Platonists and be Platonists about don't relata, care. right? And relation. I don't care what other people believe. I'm talking about what I believe. No, it just, it just seems you're confused about what Platonism is, and you're, you're saying you're. I'm not. I'm not a Platonist, so I don't know why you're bringing this up. This so, is not are you are you a structuralist then? Are I'm you a structuralist? Not. Don't know. I'd have to think about it and look it up. Don't know. So. Okay. All right. Let's, I'm going to tell you what I believe, and then you can then just try and parse it out yourself. So, right, abstract objects don't exist. We have ideas of them. And we can draw a triangle. And if we draw a triangle, the angles will always add up to 180 degrees if it's on a flat surface. There is an objective truth to the relations. And morality can be a so relation, and there can be objective truths best? to the relations. So you're saying the objects, the entities of the relations don't exist, but the relations exist? Yes, sort of. So then how are the relations, how do the relations exist without relata? What are they, what are the relata? The descriptions of how they apply to reality. So they describe how the relations exist in reality to but think. No, 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 that's, that's not what I'm asking. If I have a relation, right, say A, R, B, where A and B are the relata and R is the relation, what are A and B? I have no Let's idea. use a triangle example. But then, no, so then how do you know relations exist? I define them as existing. What do you, what do you mean? I, I, how do I know they exist? Like, they're, I assume they exist. But I, I, I just don't understand. <laughs> I have no idea what you're asking. I, right? do, you, do you know what a relation is? Uh, not exactly. No, I think like structural realism things says relations are actual real things. I have no idea what relations actually. I'm not, no, I'm not, I'm not talking about ontic structural realism. I'm not. I'm not even getting into that. I'm not talking about that at all. I'm just saying in general when I talk about a relation, for instance, in math, right? So again, you're going way too pedantic here. None of this has anything to do with my position. Well, I it just I'm confused because you're trying to cash out more. And first of all, I'm very sympathetic to moral realism, right? So I'm not just attacking moral realism. Uh, that's that's fine, realism. but again, you're going way too pedantic here. None of this. But is I just relevant. don't understand what you're saying when you say you're a moral realist. Like you, you were trying to give an analogy. I, I believe there is a maybe, maybe try maybe try a different analogy. Maybe so I, I don't. You don't need the, an analogy. analogy. I'm a moral realist because I believe there is a moral fact that is true, independent of minds. It's just that simple. It doesn't matter right. how it's true. So why should we believe that? As my Oh, it doesn't matter. I'm a moral realist independent of why or how. I can just say it's a fact and say I'm still a moral realist. So that's irrelevant to whether or not I'm a moral realist. Why and how is a separate question. Well, that's do you mind answering he's asking. that question? <laughs> why, I, I believe it's uh, what we get to, the conclusion we get to if we look at all of the evidence of morality and compile it into a, what does this principle describe or what is a principle that describes all of the different cases of morality, the moral progress, moral intuition, and Moral dilemmas, if we like plot them out like a piece of evidence, what do they indicate? And this principle is what they seem to indicate, as far as I can tell. Yeah, I, I don't understand that because that, that's just that would be straightforwardly true for the error theorist for I, any I don't other care. view. No, that would be well, fine. I mean, that's, that, that's like if I said, oh, I believe in God because X, Y, and Z. And you said, well, wait a minute, the atheist can also affirm X, Y, and Z. Why would I, you believe in God for that reason? I told him this so many times. It just had to No, I already, I already debunked that pretty simply. So I believe there is a statement that is true that refers to something uh, independent I, of I, which you is get to Your, so your realism, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna to give it back to Doorman, but 
your realism has to be something that an error theorist can't agree with. Literally every kind of anti-realist can agree no, with no, your realism. You're confusing theorem. epistemology and ontology. The ontology of my morality is saying there is a statement, there is a moral fact that is true independent of anybody say so. My epistemic basis of how I get there is irrelevant. Whether or not a more error theorist can agree with my epistemology of how I get there, they still agree with, they disagree with the ontology. They cannot agree. That's trivial, right? Of that's course they did. It's just a trivial yeah, statement, that's right? So but what, that's, that's like, if you're I ask you for an argument. What you're saying is irrelevant. No, no, it's not, right? No, it is. If it I is. ask you for an argument for why X is true, and you give me an argument for why X is true, that could also be underdetermined with a different negation X thesis. That's not an argument for X at all, right? No, wrong. That's the closure principle. There's still an argument for X. It's not, not an wait, argument. Wait, wait, so let me get this straight. If I said theism is true because of X, and I give some argument X, and X could also be true under atheism. That's an argument for theism? Correct. That's under determination. The closure principle states you Wait, can what? still use those. Yes. So That's if I said, absolutely if ridiculous. I flipped a coin and said it's evidence of heads, it could also be evidence of tails. But it wait, doesn't wait, mean it's wait. not I, evidence I be, of heads. You must be speaking a different language right now because I'm, I'm or we're, we have some Google, Google the closure principle. Google the closure principle. I know principle. what the clo There's many closure principles. Don't. There's epistemic closure. There's, so, I just, hold on, hold on. So, so you're, let me I'm, get this I'm, I'm so done with wait, you. Wait. No. You jump. No. Let me just let me just ask a quick question because maybe there's just a miscommunication here because it seems like you're affirming something that's a little ridiculous, but maybe I just misheard what you said. So if let, I let me, suppose... let me try to let me try to just answer right now. Yes, evidence can indicate many different conclusions. I'm not saying my evidence is proof that morality is objective. That's a but leap. I'm asking I'm you. That's a leap. I'm asking you, right? Well, I mean, you, we can call it whatever we want, right? So, but so I'm I can just say asking you. Suppose evidence... I'm on the fence, right? And I don't know whether realism or anti-realism. I have, you know, I've, I'm agnostic about this. And I say, if, if I had compelling I evidence, then I wouldn't need to argue at all. I could just give you the compelling evidence to convince everyone. I don't have compelling evidence to prove moral realism. I've, I've said so I don't. I, I every don't possible video. This is just this is how I get to the conclusion. You may not agree with how I get to the conclusion. You may use the same methodology to get to a different conclusion. That's irrelevant. This is how I got to that conclusion. You don't have to agree with it. It's irrelevant. So I don't understand why even there was a, why was the original discussion on why were you trying to like defend moral realism in the original discussion from what I heard? Because that's the conclusion I get to with the evidence. But you just said you can't defend it. It's a leap. So I don't see why you would defend it. Right? I, it's like, that's the problem under determination. You can still do that. That's totally fine. Like saying we see an apple drop that could be explained by gravity or it could be explained by the fact we're in the matrix and it's delusion by Descartes' demon. It's undetermined. It doesn't no. mean you can't use it to indicate one. You can no, still no, use the it. The entire point is when there is underdetermination, we appeal to other things that can dis that can determine which one is true. For instance, if I think no, every scientific no, no. theory, hold on, let me finish, Dijon. I think every scientific theory is underdetermined, right? They are. How to just appeal to some virtue that I can sort of use to pick out which theory is true. If they're fully uh, like fully underdetermined, there's no reason just trivially to, to pick one over the other. They are Unless all we appeal to some other virtue. They, they are all underdetermined. Okay. Great. So then if you're saying that all your evidence can point equally well to moral realism versus anti-realism, then I have no reason, or you have no reason to pick realism over anti-realism. Maybe so, but I'm going to say this is, the, this is the evidence I use. This is the conclusion I got to. Wait. Wait. wait I, so again, I, this is, this everything is, this we is, see in the external world could ex worth, be explained by the external world or the matrix, but I'm still going to conclude the external world. No, no, so but the whole point is when people do enough. conclude the external world, they give yeah. arguments. They give Mordian arguments. They give semantic that's external totally arguments, like Putnam's totally arguments. Right? So and they give but arguments from the point. It's irrelevant. It's, that, that's an argument, right? So if you right. want to say I'm a Mordian, I, I can make an argument from do, intuition right? and say this. I right. intuitively people actually do this, right? Yes. Right. So There's, why don't you do that? Why don't you do like a humor kind of like six times? This is the word intuition once. No, 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 no. What humor and people who try to use intuitionism. Right? Are not, they're not so doing anything I'm, like I'm you're done doing, with you. Right? You're being way too pedantic. You just don't understand the concept at all. Like, I mean, no one Jesus actually brings Christ, this up. As, like, no, this is not an issue. <laughs> like, you're confusing epistemology and ontology. Like, why? why I'm it really matter. not, dude. This you is really are. Ridiculous. You really are. <laughs> all right, buddy. <laughs> Troy, are you there? Tom, are you sure? Yeah. Did it... That was legit pretty funny, actually. <laughs> Wait, is he still here? Yeah. T well, no yeah. Tom, are you are you sure you don't want to continue with Dorman? He's a smart guy. Guy has a PhD for a reason, right? Like, probably worth interacting with. But if you don't want to, we can see if there's any other questions. 
Yeah, I have no interest in this because I'm not saying that my conclusion of moral realism is totally justified. If I could do that, I wouldn't need to argue for it. I understand it's the weakest wait, argument wait. I have. I understand wait. I can't indicate it. I've said that many, many yeah. times. It's just an intuitive wait. leap. T-Jump, I can be justifying to thinking something and still have to argue for it, right? Right, but I'm saying I can't get any. There's no conclusive evidence or reason to believe it. I'm, I, I'm not asking for conclusive evidence. I like look. You even if you give me some weaker form of evidence, I'm all ears for it, right? I'm not saying you need to give me some. Right, wait, know, so, so, so my, my argument, which I said reason. like six times, was is I get to the conclusion of this based off of this evidence. That's that's just purely just intuition, right there. I don't I don't have any. I agree the evidence can be interpreted in many different ways, and I'm saying I get to this conclusion purely intuitively. Right, but. What I'm what I'm asking is is there anything about the way you sorry, excuse me, the way you look at the evidence that makes you lean toward realism versus anti realism? Uh no, it's just an intuitive leap. That's it. So it's like I say these uh, can be explained by one principle and I'm going to say this principle exists. It seems true, independent of minds, and that's that's it. It's just an intuitive leap. That's it. I already I've said this many many videos. I don't have any complete conclusive proof or significant evidence to indicate this. It's just an intuitive leap. Well, presumably we can actually defend this if we think some sort of intuitive leap is warranted or justified. But you presumably don't think that, right? I have no idea. It's just I'm just all right. Making all right a I guess. Mean, yeah, I guess I, there's I guess it's important having this conversation. But, but you don't think that that just have a, you think that any a ground for any position is just having an intuitive leap. Well, a ground doesn't have to be a good ground. You can just ground it with anything. TJ, I think what so, was being asked of you, what was being asked is not that you have conclusive evidence. What was asked is essentially, why would you lean one way or the other if it seems like on both of them? I've, I've answered that. Evidence like intuition. So it's just, so, okay, so, your, your intuition. If, again, again answered this well, many many times many times in the video don't have any kind of evidence that indicates one significantly more than the other so it's not a solved problem in philosophy for that exact reason it's just that's the conclusion i get to you don't have to accept it. i don't care if you accept it what's the problem exactly it's unsolved problem what what what, what problem is this I just, um I like a definition of objective you... morality I just don't understand if why you would have an intuition that the evidence leads you to one path rather than the other it's, path. But the evidence it's an is intuition. compatible with both paths. Like That's why, how intuition why do you works. think you have that intuition if you acknowledge this is the I don't care. Is just as I don't care. It's under determination isn't a problem here. So not relevant to my position. So why doesn't undetermination apply to your position? It does apply to my position. But because of the closure principle, so it's not actually it? a problem. But if, if, but if, if, but if you all think positions, it, all things are underdetermined. So then how can you start with the position if it's under, if everything's completely undetermined? In lots of ways. It's the closure principle. There's no, it can't Google because it's undetermined. Principle. You can't, even, you can't yeah, start no, with the closure I'm, 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 I'm done sorry, with this topic. Just, just, I'm done with this topic. Your skepticism oh, no. is self refuting man. If you, if you consistently underdetermine okay, everything, okay, hey, 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 he's, he's, he's the question. one here doing that little AMA, so if he wants to be done with someone, he can be done with them. So <clears> I'm just going to mute that one person. Sorry, Pericleitis, you can get unmuted later. Uh, does anyone else have any questions? T-Jump, do you want to keep going, or are you running out of energy? Yeah, I'm running out of energy. I'm going to head off. Okay, all right, um, well, thanks for... Just... Uh, what? No, no, he said okay. he's done. He said he's done. Okay, thanks for coming by the server. Have a good one, eh? Thanks, you too.